I know there's a ton of iPad mini review videos out there. This one's gonna be a little bit different because I'll be talking about how it fits into my workflow as a freelance illustrator and what it's like actually doing a lot of drawing on it. That said, it's not replacing my iPad Pro. There might be two iPads in my life. And listen, maybe I didn't need it. Maybe I shouldn't have bought it, but I did. And here we are, no regrets. You're just a little baby. You're a tiny baby. Hi, my name is Chris Piasek. I've been an independent illustrator for the past 12 years. I've worked with clients like Cartoon Network, Nike, Facebook, and tons more. On this channel, I talk about my illustration practice, process, experience, tools, and sometimes ADHD. I'm gonna talk about why I bought the iPad mini, even though I already have an iPad Pro. I'll compare the two and let you know how the little baby stacks up. I'll also talk about how it fits into my workflow. I might also justify the purchase a little bit more, but that's, that's just for my own benefit. Oh, and hey, stick around to the end for some cool iPad tips, and also to hear my thoughts on the paper feel screen protector that I've been using on the new iPad mini. Because it's not really the new iPad mini, it's my new iPad mini, because it didn't just come out. This isn't a tech channel. Okay, so what's the main reason I bought the iPad mini? Well, to be honest, I saw a video that Weston Woodfin put out that just made it look really good. And I felt like I needed to have one. So maybe go check out his video. Wait, 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 don't check out his video. Maybe after this, after this, you can go watch his video, but we, you're already here, so let's just hang out. So when I bought it, I knew it wasn't gonna replace my iPad Pro, but to be honest, the iPad Pro is so big that I hardly ever take it with me when I go anywhere. The iPad mini size is perfect to just grab and take with you anywhere you go. I can also use the Apple Pencil I already have with both of them. I don't have to buy another one, so that's saving me some money. I guess it's not really saving money because, listen, this isn't financial advice, in case you were thinking that this, this might be a financial advice channel. It's not. It can fit in my back pocket. I think I have a couple pairs of pants where it'll fit in the front. It'll fit in like a hoodie pocket in the front. And it also fits in this little uh, satchel. I've never been a satchel person before, but just look how perfect it fits in here. Just slides right in. Look at that. Let me just do a little zip, a little zippity doo dah. And then I can just uh, throw it over my shoulder. I'm ready to go. I've done this twice so far. And uh, to be honest, I was kind of into it. It was nice having this little, little pack with me. It's like this. I'm out and I'm like, oh, an idea. And I'm drawing. Can't do that with an iPad Pro. I'm gonna take my satchel off. So I don't know. I think maybe I could be a satchel person. What do you think? Do I look like a satchel person? Let me know in the comments. So how small is this tiny baby? Well, I guess you can see how small it is, but you don't know. You don't know what my size is. It could be a giant or- It could be a tiny little person. And this could be- This could be an iPad Pro and I'm just huge. Let me give you something that you can compare it to. This right here. See, Moleskine sketchbook. I feel like this is the, the gold standard for portable sketching activities. They're nearly the same size. Look at this. Look at that. Same size. So what does that tell you? So obviously lots of drawing gets done in Moleskine sketchbooks. But even though they're technically the same size, this feels so much bigger than a Moleskine sketchbook because it's so easy to just zoom in and out intuitively. And you just feel like you have all the space in the world. When you're working on a sketchbook, you can't be zooming. There's no zooms. Try to zoom, doesn't work, doesn't do anything. Is the iPad mini the Moleskine sketchbook killer? Has their reign of a hundred years come to an end? I don't know if they've been around for a hundred years, but let me know in the comments if you know about Moleskine sketchbooks. Also, there's infinity pages. There's a set amount of pages in a, in a Moleskine sketchbook. You get to the end, that's it. Also undo, that should be the number one version, undo. Have you ever drawn on paper and you draw and then you draw something bad and you're like, go away, go away, I don't wanna see this again. Well, you can't do that. On the iPad mini, you can undo all day. It's really just a, a fun size to draw on. I don't know why it's it's more fun. I don't know if it's more fun, but it's it's like a, it's a cool little size. It's like a fun little device to draw with. It's a nice change of pace. Just makes me wanna have it with me all the time. The problem is I don't really go anywhere, so how necessary was this purchase? So let's get nerdy and talk some specs. This little iPad mini doesn't even have the M1 or even the M2 chip. It's got the 
the old A series or whatever that is that you can find in an iPhone. It only has a 64 gig hard drive. I think there's one other option that you can get a little bit bigger, but I feel like at that point it gets a little expensive for an iPad mini. So it's not even close to my iPad Pro in terms of performance. That said, I've yet to experience any lag whatsoever. I've drawn on this thing a bunch, it's very snappy. I can't see any lag between the pencil and what I'm drawing. Big files are fine. For example, this animated scene that I made for my new Skillshare class. Hey, have you uh, checked out my new Skillshare class? It's called Easy Animation for Illustrators with Adobe Fresco on the iPad. So let's open up this scene on the iPad mini and see how it does. It's got seven layers of animation, seven different timelines, all kinds of things going. It's a pretty big file. Let's see if there's any lag. So we'll hit play and perfect. Full speed, no issues here. It does this fine. These iPad Pros have had more power than they can even use for a really long time. Even this meager iPad mini with the old processor is perfectly capable of running a complicated animated scene in Adobe Fresco. To be honest, I don't know what kind of complicated things people are even doing on iPad Pros to, to use the incredible power that they have, because I'm certainly not using it. I guess if you're doing like full on video editing, but even then, I don't think there's software that runs on iOS that's that complicated. Maybe there is. I don't know what I'm talking about. All I'm saying is that for drawing purposes, this little iPad mini is fully capable, no issues whatsoever. So aside from the processor, the other thing is the smaller hard drive. And this is also not an issue for me because of the way that I work. I do the majority of my work in Adobe Fresco and Adobe Fresco is part of the Adobe Creative Cloud suite. And when you're using Adobe Creative Cloud, all of the iPad apps automatically sync to Creative Cloud. So it's not taking up a bunch of space on your iPad, which is really great. A side benefit to this is that I can be working on something on the iPad Pro, finish it up, close the iPad Pro, leave, take the iPad mini with me, and then I can pop open that file and because it's automatically synced with Creative Cloud, it's ready to go on the iPad mini. This also means I can access and edit files anywhere I go, as long as I have this little, little baby iPad with me. And it's so small, why wouldn't it be? But again, I don't really go anywhere, so... Oh, but wait, what about this? What if my kid pours juice in my iPad Pro, like right in the port, just, just destroys the iPad Pro? It doesn't work anymore, it's all, it's all dead. And I have a project due in one hour. Am I screwed? Well, no. I can just take this little iPad mini, open it up, the file is already there because I use Creative Cloud, and I could just do the project, finish it off on my iPad mini, and send it off, crisis averted. So I guess you could say the purchase of this iPad mini was less reckless and more of smart business insurance. So it wasn't a stupid, impulsive, unnecessary, reckless financial decision. Sounds like I'm more of a smart business person if you ask me. Speaking of business, it's also a tax write-off. It was the best decision I ever made. All right, so what about shoulder pain, you might be asking? All right, you probably aren't asking that. Over the years, I've had issues with my elbow, and like my forearm and all this fascia stuff and my shoulder from the repetitive motion of drawing basically the same way. I hold my iPad like this and I draw like this. And if I don't anchor my elbow, this gets ruined. And if I anchor my elbow, my shoulder gets ruined. So I can't win either way. All right, so how does the iPad mini relate to this? You might be asking. Well, it's so small that I'm in a completely different position when I'm drawing. So it changes things up and it makes that repetitive motion a little bit different. So I guess you could say it's actually saving my shoulder. And how much do new shoulders cost? I bet it's way more than an iPad mini. So who's making poor financial decisions now? Not this guy. Let's do some rapid fire other cool things. One, it has USB-C, unlike my stupid gigantic iPhone Pro Max. It's got the same charger that I can use on my iPad Pro and on my MacBook Pro. It's all the same, super convenient. So it's got Touch ID and it's over on the side instead of taking up space on the screen like the old iPads did. I actually sort of prefer the Touch ID to the Face ID. Just feel like the Face ID can be a little finicky. And this is just sort of like a natural place where you would rest your finger when you're holding it. So it just uh, works out really well, I think. Speaking of the sides, it's got these up and down buttons like you're used to seeing on 
an iPad. What's cool about these is they're smart buttons. So if I'm using the iPad mini horizontally, if you press up, that would turn the volume up. If you press down, it pulls the volume down. And then when it's vertical, it switches so that it makes sense. That's pretty cool. That's the kind of attention to detail that makes me an Apple fanboy. Also, even though it's really tiny, you can use it as an additional display with your MacBook or iMac or whatever Mac you have, if you have a Mac. I find the size is, is pretty cool for like putting tools over there. Like if you're working in Photoshop or something like that, you can have your layers and tools and all that stuff on the mini screen. And then you've got your full screen that you can dedicate to your artwork or whatever else you're doing. Or maybe you could put like your messages over there or email, wherever you want. You could have, you could have some videos playing. You could have YouTube videos playing over here and doing stuff on the other screen. And with this little baby Zugu case, it's got these magnets on it. So I can just like pop it up on this little arm here. It's like a little display arm. You can stick it wherever you want. But I guess that's a Zugu case thing and not an iPad mini thing. But it could be if you get the Zugu case. Link in description. All right, you want some cool iPad tips? All right, fine. But first, you need to go and smash the subscribe like bell. Seriously though, I would greatly appreciate it if you could like this video, subscribe, maybe share it with some friends. Really helps get this channel moving. This is still a very new channel and I'm trying to grow it and make more of these things. So I don't know, thank you. All right, let's get on to these tips. So you can just pick up the iPad, tap the screen with the pencil, and just make a note. This is especially helpful for people like me with ADHD who have lots of random thoughts and ideas. And if you don't capture them, they will be gone forever never to appear again. Similar to that, when you're actually using the iPad and you have another one of these ideas, you can just swipe up from the bottom right and you get this little quick note feature where you can just make a quick little note and then slides back away. Super handy. Swipe up from the bottom left and you can take a screenshot. This is another one that is super helpful for me because I've always been in the habit of taking tons of screenshots as like a quick way to remind me of something. The problem is I never know what I'm supposed to be reminded of from these screenshots. I just look at the screenshot. I'm like, why do I have this screenshot? So now swipe up from the screenshot and then I can just with my pencil make a quick little note on the screenshot. And then I know why I took a screenshot of it. The other great thing is like typically when you wanna do a screenshot on an iPad, you gotta like put down the pencil and do like press all the buttons at the same time. Here, you don't have to put down the pencil. You just swipe up. One little motion, you got the screenshot. All right, are we convinced this was a good purchase? I think I'm satisfied. Let me know if I'm a reckless, impulsive idiot in the comments. Okay, to recap, it's super portable, like a little robot moleskin. It's got plenty of power, and the drawing experience is just as good as it is on the iPad Pro, aside from being a little bit smaller. A lot of bit smaller. I think someone could actually get by as an illustrator with just the iPad mini, especially if they work within the Creative Cloud suite of applications. You could also easily use it as like a display tablet with your Mac. And if you use something like AstroPad, you could actually choose how much of your display that you want to appear on the iPad screen so that you're not trying to replicate an entire big screen on a little screen. You would just sort of crop in on your drawing window and then that's where you would be able to draw on your display. Do you think you could manage with just a, a Wii pad? I'm sure I could do it, but I would rather have the bigger iPad to do most of my drawing on. All right, so what about this uh, screen protector? I've used a whole bunch of different screen protectors. If you haven't seen any of my other iPad screen protector review videos, there's a playlist of reviews where you'll be able to find them in there. This is the paper feel screen protector. And I gotta say, I'm really liking this one. I think this might be my favorite at the moment. It's sort of like a, a Goldilocks experience where it's just enough texture, but not so much that it just chews through Apple Pencil tips and doesn't really affect the display quality too much. I find it has just enough texture to give a little bit of resistance and feel better than the straight glass, but it's not super aggressive like the Bellamon paper screen protector, which I reviewed. And it's got a little bit more tooth than the new paper-like screen protector. And it's cheap. There's a link in my description for stuff that I use, which will open up my Amazon storefront, which will have this screen protector in there as well as all the other stuff that I use. 
Hope you found this helpful. And while you're here, check out this other video that YouTube thinks is perfect for you. All right. Good talk. You little baby iPad.